Hi, my name is Justin Kern, and I'm going to talk to you today about your course uh, ESET 130 as well as the unboxing of your parts kit. So the parts kit you should receive from the electronics prep room should look something like this. So inside you have your Arduino Uno, an LCD display, and a couple other sensors. So your Arduino Uno is going to be the microcontroller that we're programming in this course. It'll be in this box. I'll talk a little bit more about that in it. You also have an LCD display. So the LCD display you'll be using to show different information on the screen as well as you'll have to do a little bit of soldering. We'll talk about that more in a follow-up video later on in the course. You also have a few sensors inside this parts kit as well. The first sensor is a photoresistor. So this photoresistor works by changing its resistance based on how much light it sees. The little chip on board here is a motor controller. And then the third part is a three color LED. This three color LED has red, green, and blue LED lights inside of it. We commonly call this an RGB LED. We also have an ultrasonic sensor. So it looks like a little device with two speakers on it. So the ultrasonic sensor will use in a range finding lab, um, basically to measure distance away from objects. You also in the kit have a programming cable that we'll be using to connect to the Arduino and to connect to any computer. You should also be equipped with a breadboard. So your breadboard should look something like this and needs a little bit of assembly. Now before I get too much further into the Arduino and how it works, um, let's take a look at how you actually connect it. So if I unbox the Arduino, inside you see the Arduino mounted on this plastic board and if you look at the top there it says an Arduino Uno. Now the Uno is one type of Arduino, that's what we'll be using for this whole course. And I'll talk a bit more about why there's different types of Arduinos in subsequent videos, as well as the differences between them and how you can tell. Now your Arduino connects via USB, so if I take my USB cable and I take my Arduino Uno, the connection only fits in one way, and now I'm able to connect this Arduino to any computer via USB and program it and actually interface with the device so we can do a few things. Now, throughout this course, you're going to have many labs you're going to do that are going to take up quite a bit of time as well as room on your breadboard. Again, your breadboard is this device here, which we'll use for making electrical connections. Now, before I go into describing how this works, I'll show you my breadboard. So my breadboard contains actually every lab that we'll do in this course. And you, if you plan out your usage of space carefully, you can actually fit every single lab for this course on one breadboard. So as you see here is my ultrasonic sensor. Over here is the motor controller, my LCD screen, as well as some other parts that we'll talk about later on in the course. So we're going to take a look at where we can find information on D2L for a course. So specifically, I'm on the ESET 130 Engineering and Applications in C course on D2L. If I want to find any course information, I'm going to go over here to the, where it says My Tools, click the drop-down link, and then select Content. Under Content, I'll see options for information about lectures. So under Lectures, I have this week's lecture, ESET 130 Lecture 1. If I click Labs, I have the ESET 130 Week 1 Lab that I can follow along, as well as under the reference section, there are also general help and references throughout this course for programming and other aspects of the, of the class. Now, if I click on the lab file here, the PDF will open in the browser, and I'm able to actually read the lab and see what's going on. So, this is the ESET 130 Lab 1 Intro to the Arduino Uno. So, the very first step the lab suggests to do is to download and install the Arduino.cc software. If you're using a school computer, the software will already be installed for you. If you're using your own computer, like a laptop, or if you want to work at home, then you will need to install the Arduino software. It's free to download, but it must be installed on your computer in order for you to do programming, in order for you to interface to the Uno. So let's click on this link here, right from the PDF. It opens up a new page, and we're taken to the web page for Arduino. If you Google Arduino, you'll notice that there's a couple different um, websites available. We're specifically using the Arduino.cc website only. Now, for downloading and installing the application, we're going to want the Windows installer download. 
if you don't have the ability to be an administrator, say you're not on your own home computer and you're, say, on like a, a Camosun computer and you're not an administrator, you need to install it, you'll need to download the Windows zip file. Otherwise, you want the Windows installer. If we click the Windows installer, we'll be taken to the donate page. Click just donate, download for now. Of course, you can always donate if you like. And then once the download is completed, you're going to want to click on the IDE. Once you begin installing, you'll probably be prompted by Windows. You'll need to approve the applications that it can install. If there's another version of the computer, it'll need to be uninstalled before you use it. In this case, I had the, the IDE installed from last year, so before I can install the program, it first must uninstall the existing application. So you're going to, at a minimum, need the Arduino software and the USB driver. The other options you can leave set for now or choose the options that best suit your needs. Once the Arduino software is installed, we'll talk about connecting the Arduino to the computer as well as getting the first section of the lab started. So while this is installing, if I go back to the lab handout, The next step in the lab is to do the basic blink for the Arduino Uno. Now, inside the Arduino Uno software library, so what we typically call the Arduino IDE, IDE stands for the Integrated Development Environment. It's what we use for programming as well as um, installing software on the Arduino Uno. Inside there, there's a series of examples. Uh, that I'll discuss and we'll be able to do some more work on. So now that our Arduino IDE has finished installing, we need to open up the program. So if you don't see the Arduino Uno or the Arduino IDE in your start menu, you come down here to all programs, navigate to the Arduino folder, and then click the Arduino IDE executable. So once the program's open, so this is the blank Arduino sketch, let's go back to our lab and see what we need to do. So we just finished launching the Arduino IDE and the program opened. Now what we need to do is load the example. So we can load the example file by going to Arduino IDE, navigating to File, going down to Examples, Basics, and then Blink. By clicking on this, it's going to open up a new Arduino IDE window. Let's take a look at what's going on in here. So we have a number of things going on in this window at first glance. The first thing I'm going to explain is the block comment. So here at the top of the program, we have a general description of what this program does. And this is information we give to the user so that they understand what's going on with their code. And this is good practice for any program. So if you write code, you should get a general description at the top of what it does and, and why. So we write block comments by using the star slash and the slash star. Anything that appears between these two things will just be a comment. It doesn't affect any of the program code and it's not compiled into the device. It's simply there as information for the user. Any block comment you can also collapse so that it makes your code more readable for what you actually want to see. The next way that we can make a comment is by using two slashes. So the two slashes here signify that this will comment out one line of code. So all of line 17 will just be text that's information for the user. Right below that, we have what's called void setup. So if you notice, I have void setup and void loop. These two things are also collapsible. So if we look at this here, I can expand and collapse these two pieces of code because that's what we call a function. So the function is all the code that appears between these two curly braces. If you notice, when I click on the upper curly brace here, its matching curly brace is highlighted here with this blue box. It makes it very easy to tell the association between curly braces because essentially everything that is between these two is what's going to be a part of void setup. Now, in void setup specifically, what we're doing is we're setting pin 13 of our Uno as an output. The reason we want it to be an output is we want to be able to control that pin. We want to be able to set it as a high and set it as a low. And what this means in case of the blink 
example is that we're going to control an LED. We're going to make it come on and illuminate by making it a high, and we're going to make it go dark and shut off by making it a low. So if we come down here and we actually look at our void loop code, we have this line of code here where we write to pin 13 and make it high. So that means that we're telling the computer or the UNO that we want to set a high voltage on pin 13. The next thing we do is we delay for a thousand. A thousand what? Well, a thousand milliseconds. So the thousand milliseconds in one second. So this is what this is going to do is this is going to turn the LED on for one second by delaying for a thousand milliseconds. We then shut it off by writing this line of code here and setting the pin low and then wait another thousand second, thousand milliseconds. And this will continue forever because it's in void loop. Again, the main difference between void setup and void loop is that void setup only runs once and void loop runs forever. So all the code in void loop runs continuously. It just goes over and over and over in a loop. When we talk about code, code always runs top down, left to right. So whenever the system is compiling code, whatever appears at the top of your code will run before the stuff that appears at the bottom of your code. So void setup runs before void loop. It runs once, then void loop is called, and void loop runs continuously until you end your program or remove power from it. Now, we have our code here, and we want to actually program our device. So we need to first compile it. So we can compile the code one of two ways, by clicking the verify button or by coming up to sketch and clicking verify slash compile. But we need to know what we're compiling the code for. So we have to tell the IDE, well, what is our target? What are we actually going to be putting this code on? Because it changes how it deals with programming the device. So before we do that, let's plug in Arduino Uno. So if I plug in my Uno to my computer, I should now be able to select it. So my board type for this course is going to be the Arduino Genuino Uno. So if you click on board, make sure this is selected. Then if I come down to ports here, because my Arduino is now plugged in, I can see that my Arduino is plugged into COM26. And it says Arduino slash Genuino Uno. It doesn't matter if your COM number is different. This is just the communication port that your Arduino is currently on in your computer. It's important that whatever one you're connected to says Arduino slash Genuino Uno. So let's compile and program a device. So if I click the verify button here at the top of the, of the IDE, it's compiling my sketch. So what that means is it's going through and it's making sure that all the code I've written is syntactically correct. There's not a spelling mistake and everything is accessible by my Arduino. And at the bottom when it's done, it tells me how many bytes of program memory we're using, in this case 2% of the total storage space in my Uno, and it also tells me some other information like the number of global variables and dynamic memory. More of these things will be addressed later in videos. Now, if I actually want to program my device and make the LED blink, I need to go up here. Again, I can click this upload button here, this sideways arrow, or I can go to sketch and click upload. So when you upload, it'll automatically compile, and now my device has been programmed. So on your board, you should now see the onboard LED of the device flashing. Now that my Uno is programmed, I can actually look at the device, and you'll see here on the screen that I have this orange LED flashing. See right here, my finger's pointing. I have an orange LED flashing at a one second rate. So if you go in and modify your code, if you go in and modify that thousand milliseconds delay and change it, you'll see that your LED blinks at different rates. Try changing just one of them at a time and see how that affects how the LED works. Now, for the next part of the lab, we need to actually modify the code in this and change this delay value. But before we can do that, what we have to do is we have to make our own copy of this example file. Now, in order to do that, we have to go and click Save As and then choose the location. In this case, I already have an ESET 130 folder, and in there I have a folder to save my Blink uh, sketch code. Once that's done, I can change this delay value 
to 200 milliseconds, as it says in the lab. So if you look here in the lab, it says modify the code to blink your LED at a 200 millisecond rate, compile and upload your code to verify it works. In order for any code that you modify to actually be seen as a change on your Arduino, you must compile and upload it again. So again, you need to verify it, which is the process of compiling and making sure everything is syntactically correct. And the next step is to upload it to the device so that you can actually see if those changes worked.